Okay, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens in the next election. Mr. Okay. 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 Colleagues, yeah. colleagues, what please. Said, Mr. Jari, your yeah. colleague has a point of the floor, or has the floor, not yourself. Mr. Sheriff, I'm There's not mistaken. Standing Order 18 is to not insult other members as well or oh, speak yeah. disparagingly. So I, I'm taking okay. a little personal all of you, of the things that all of you. I don't think I've insulted you personally at all, Mr. Brock. Mr. Brock, Ms. Atwood. Mr. Brock, continue. And we just How ask sensitive. if you people have How sensitive valid point of orders, please bring them up. Again, he continues to insult us on a personal level, and it's unacceptable, Mr. Chair. Yeah. The, the crux of the motion is that this new information, as determined by Politico from this information um, that Politico obtained, shows a direct uh, contradiction between Mr. Clark's testimony to this committee and uh, information that he communicated to the department. Uh, it, I will quote the article. It says that um, he notified Global Affairs that the official residence was not suitable, these are his words, not suitable for hosting or for living and required immediate replacement, also his words, uh, required immediate <laughs> replacement document show. If I were to um, go home to my husband this weekend and say, honey, our home is not suitable uh, for our, our family and it requires immediate replacement, I could only uh, expect and understand that my husband would take it as a signal that we need a, and a communication that we need a, a, new, uh, a new home. There, there can be no other interpretation of these words that Mr. Clark communicated to Global Affairs Canada. Um, in saying something is not suitable, in saying that it requires immediate replacement, this indicates Mr. Clark felt uh, the necessity of a new, of a new uh, location. And not only that, um, a better one as indicated by the words not suitable. Um, he expressed concerns regarding the completion of the kitchen and refurbishment project and indicated the unit was not suitable to be the accommodations and does not have an ideal floor plan for representational uh, activities. These things all indicate to him, first of all, inputting into the process and secondly, and asking, secondly, asking for immediate action and immediate action and three, wanting some type of improvement. I believe that that's not what not suitable indicates. Uh, now, if he would like to come here and argue uh, that there were other more reasonable uh, requirements, such as not being accessible, um, uh, his his uh, aspirations relative to his mandate with large monthly monthly gatherings, his desire to make Canada shine. He he can come here and he can argue that he can do that if he likes, um, but it, it is just evident from the article from the information as obtained by Politico that he communicated that he made input into this decision, which is contrary to what he shared with this committee. It, and any time that we have found uh, a contradiction of, of testimony, and unfortunately with this government, we have found contradiction of testimony several times over in several situations, and I won't um, repeat them or belabor uh, them once again, but this is not the first time, but it is the practice when we have found con contradicting testimony with new information that we call a witness back to this committee to not only give them the opportunity to correct the record, because that this, this is uh, the fair and right thing to do, but also to justify uh, their their actions um, and their words to Canadians, whether something was misinterpreted, whether something was the the new information uh, was in a different context. We have always provided uh, this this space and this opportunity when there have been contradictions for witnesses to come back. And so I believe that given this new information from Politico today, given the clear contradiction between the testimony of Mr. Clark and, and what we have found out today, it behooves us as a committee, not only for the purpose of finding out um, why this contradiction exists, but also 
for the transparency of information um, to, to and for Canadians to invite Mr. Clark back. So I believe in supporting this motion, we are supporting transparency. We are uh, recognizing that a contradiction exists and giving Mr. Clark the opportunity to come back and provide an exclamation, excuse me, and provide transparency for Canadians as to why $9 million of their hard earned money was spent when there is a record $2 million, 2 million, excuse me, Canadians um, lining up at food banks, uh, a 28% increase in my own city of Calgary. Uh, and, and I think that these are all justifiable reasons to support this motion and to call Mr. Clark back, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go to Mr. Brock, then Mr. Sousa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> One thing that I remember uh, vividly from Mr. Clark's previous testimony at the Mighty Ogo was just how adamant to the point of literally raising his voice, turning red in color in face, how adamant he was that from start to finish, he had no influence whatsoever in the acquisition of the condominium on Billionaire's Row. Now, I, I'm going to be speaking on behalf of, of Ms. Cousy and Mr. Barrett. I believe uh, Ms. Block was also in attendance and myself. All four of us didn't believe one word that he was saying. This was well before we received any evidence from Politico, and all of us accused him of lying of which he took great offense to. But here we are, some several months removed, and the political instincts of the Conservative members here in Ogo were validated, 100% validated, that notwithstanding that this condominium, the old condominium on Park Avenue, was quite suitable for over 20 Council generals, two months within the mandate of Tom Clark, which just happens to coincide with records that this committee has received, happens to coincide with a cozy meeting that Tom Clark had with Justin Trudeau in Manhattan, where both of them were boasting and smiling and laughing in the back of a limousine, driving down one of the major thoroughfares of Manhattan. Yeah. Within two months, we learn that Tom Clark now is a confirmed liar. That he has, I know, Mr. Souza, you find that uh, rather remarkable for me now saying that. But it's interesting that when this story broke, which I believe was yesterday from Politico, there was such an eerie silence from the Liberal government. Nothing by way of any sort of clarifying statement from the PMO, no clarifying statement from Justin Trudeau, nothing from Tom Clark, but just eerie silence, as if it was a child getting caught with his hand in the cookie jar. That's what I equate this to. Because now we know within two months of Tom Clark's arrival in New York, he notifies Global Affairs, and we don't know how that was, how that notification took place, whether it was a phone call, uh, whether it was an email, whether it was relayed via Justin Trudeau, who knows? We'll, we'll eventually find all of that out, but it certainly requires a deeper examination. That it was not suitable, his words, not suitable for hosting, or for living and required immediate replacement. Immediate. Because obviously, a multi-decade-old condominium didn't suit the particular lavish lifestyle of Tom Clark. And to feed that hubris element of Tom Clark, 
whose ego is as large as all the oceans combined. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Suez. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, wanted to have, wanted to live like a king. Wanted to live like a king. And, and, and interestingly, how this story broke to Canadians is through the American media, because American media caught up with the acquisition, this purchase on Billionaire's Row, and it was listed in the name of His Majesty the King. That sparked interest. That sparked curiosity. And it was only then that Global Affairs confirmed, no, 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 it's not King Charles who is looking for an alternate residence or a secondary or tertiary residence. No, 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 it's for the Consul General. So then the story started to break, and then we started to learn about all these impressive amenities. The Venetian marble, the full suite of the Gagano appliances. I did some research on Gagano. Gagano is the most expensive appliance manufacturer in the world. Um, you know, kings, I'm sure, have Gagano appliances. Shaws and Sheiks have Gagano appliances. The, the um, coffee maker alone, Mr. Chair, $5,000. And if memory serves me correct, the refrigerator alone, $19,000. Three bedrooms, because it's important that Tom Clark and his wife have access to extra bedrooms. You never know when Justin wants to come down to Manhattan, um, and perhaps they can they can uh, uh, give him an extra room to uh, to sleep in. But in addition to that, we have we have all the other amenities available to occupants of Billionaires Row. We got the golf simulator. We got the full length um, uh, uh, swimming lanes. We've got the paddle courts. And yes, Tom Clark is living the life of luxury and is living the life of a king. We had news articles basically profiling that. So it really concerns me as, um, as a lawyer and, and a, former, um, a former participant in the justice system in terms of when people come to committees, and although, and I always say this, depending on the nature of the issue and the witness, although uh, there is no formal requirement to swear or to affirm to tell the truth, by its very nature, committee is set up that individuals are expected to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And when they don't tell the truth, and it's confirmed that witnesses don't tell the truth, there is a process in Parliament that these individuals can receive their just consequences. Case in point, Christian Firth. All members of this committee remember Christian Firth, who ultimately had to face the wrath of appearing at the bar of the House of Commons to answer to his deliberate lies. So I take lying at committee very, very seriously. But it wasn't just Tom Clark, although the motion is centered around Tom Clark. This is one of the questions I pose to, to the minister today. We've heard from a litany of government officials mm -hmm. who, in essence, confirmed 100% the lie that Tom Clark shared with this committee during his last appearance, that he had no involvement. If it was said once, it must have been said a hundred times repeatedly over the course of several months since we started this study uh, last uh, late spring, early summer. Now, we're not asking that those officials be recalled, although I think there are grounds, political grounds to do that. This particular motion is very centered squarely on Tom Clark. And I know that Mr. Jawari in his 
uh, in a statement at the outset, claims that the report, this is a useless exercise, the report is a fait accompli, there's going to be no evidence of any political connection whatsoever. Well, with all due respect to Mr. Juari, the fact that I'm now referencing everything that I have in relation to That's the political the story and in relation sorry, to the previous order, testimony. Brock, excuse me, Mr. Juari. And I'd, I'd like to say that the conclusion that the MP Larry Block uh, drew from my comments is not appropriate. Thank you. Continue, Mr. Brock. Thank you. So what? So what we're trying to do ultimately, and I, I would expect that every parliamentarian in this House of Commons would want to get to the truth. The fact that Mr. Jawari has already telegraphed his opposition to this motion, and I wouldn't be surprised because they all follow suit, of course, Ms. Atwin, Mr. Kuzmerchuk, Mr. Souza will all do the same because they don't believe in accountability, Mr. Chair. They don't believe in transparency. And wherever there's been a hint of a scandal or a cover-up, you know the good liberal members of the OGO bench will carry the water of Justin Trudeau because they don't want to make this political. And ultimately, we may draw the connection. We may join the, uh, join the dots and show a direct political Point influence order, Mr. Chair. with the acquisition me, of Mr. this condominium. Excuse me, Mr. Brock, Mr. Jory. I gladly carry uh, Prime Minister Justin through those water any day rather than carrying Mr. Polyev's water at you guys are doing the divisiveness. Mr. Okay. That's not a point of order. Okay. Mr. Brock, continue. Uh, well, Mr. Kuzmerchuk calls it a leaky bucket, so probably is leaky because, oh, you know, the amount of buckets that, that those members have had to carry for Justin Trudeau over nine years must be rather enormous. Yeah, point of order. Okay, yeah, well, we'll see what happens in the next election. I Mr. think it's standing order 18. Yeah, yeah. Colleagues, yeah. colleagues, what please. What Mr. Jari, your yeah. colleague has a point of order, or has the floor, not yourself. Mr. Sheriff, I'm not mistaken, Ms. standing Ms. order 18 is to not insult other members as well or oh, speak disparagingly. So I'm taking okay, a little personal all of you, the things that all of you. I don't think I've insulted you personally at all, Mr. Brock. Mr. Brock, Ms. Atwood. Mr. Brock, continue, and we just How ask sensitive. if you people have How sensitive valid point of orders, today. please bring point them of order? up. Again, he continues to insult yeah. us on a personal level, and it's unacceptable, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Brock, continue. Yeah. So to make a fine point, to make a fine point on my last uh, point that I wish to make, uh, Mr. Chair, is that every member, regardless of political stripe, should be standing for the truth, should be standing for accountability and transparency. And to my colleague, Ms. Cousy's point, which was an excellent point, the tradition at this particular committee and all the other committees I have been privileged to speaking to and participate in, wherever there is a suspicion, let alone some conclusive evidence of misleading committee or contradictory evidence, it is always incumbent upon a committee to seek out clarification. Maybe Mr. Clark has, a, has an honest, reasonable explanation for this story. But let's give him that chance. Let's give him that chance at committee where his explanation can be tested in cross-examination. Thank you, Mr. Chair.